What's up guys, this is Deadite from Boomstick Gaming. We have a slightly weird issue today. I put out my Dead Cells review last week and then IGN put out their uh, written and video review today and it turns out the uh, the gentleman there at IGN seems to have watched my video and copied a lot of it, so I'm not sure what to do about this. Let's just uh, walk through it and I'll show you what I mean. First off, this is uh, the Boomstick Gaming, that's myself. Let's go ahead and start. Dead Cells takes the progression of a Metroidvania and integrates it into this procedurally generated action roguelite that has you slowly chipping away at its steep difficulty. It takes the progression system of a Metroidvania and transforms it into a procedurally generated action roguelite. Okay, not that not that similar. Some similarities. Let's uh let's proceed. In Dead Cells, you'll need to kill your way through a labyrinth of levels all punctuated by boss encounters that starts off quite linear, but the more you play, the more routes and game mechanics will open up to you. In Dead Cells, you fight your way through an ever-changing labyrinth of levels with branching paths. You might not be able to make it to the final boss on your current run, but if you can manage to salvage some blueprints for some new gear, or better yet, an ability-altering rune, it makes it all worth your while even if you can see your death just around the corner. This is the type of roguelike that, yeah, sure, you could beat the boss on your first attempt, but you're probably not going to and you're not supposed to. Let's stop there, let's see what Philip has to say next. You're almost guaranteed not to make it all the way through on every run, but as your efforts lead you to blueprints that unlock new gear, it makes it all worth your while. Okay, switch over to me. In most games of this genre, your coolest skills and spells are often set to strictly long recharge timers or a limited mana system. But in Dead Cells, your abilities have incredibly quick recharges and allow you to seamlessly integrate these gadgets into normal encounters, and it doesn't make you feel penalized for using your cool stuff. Most games limit your most useful skills with long cooldown timers or a limited mana system, but Dead Cells encourages you to use your deadliest gadgets with a fast recharge timer. It never punishes you for using your best tactics. Okay, this is one of my favorites here, this part. This combat system is fast, fluid, responsive, and one of the most rewarding representations of 2D combat of the entire genre. Fights are fast, fluid, responsive, and hands down one of the most gratifying representations of video game combat I've ever experienced. So it's starting to get a little fishy, huh? Also in place is a mutation system that has you pick from various buffs that can enhance and alter your abilities, but mutation system, which adds another layer of diversity to how you can play. This is where you can choose from various buffs that enhance and alter your abilities. All right, stellar writing, Philip. Dead Cells only falters slightly with some repetition setting in, especially on the early areas and during longer play sessions. Dead Cells does falter slightly with some repetition, but it's only felt in its earlier areas and during the extended play sessions. The enemy designs here are interesting and fun to fight, but in the first level alone, you'll probably have killed the same enemy about 50 times already, and that same enemy will be used throughout various levels. While early level enemies are a good introduction and make for fun and interesting fights early on, you can only kill so many zombies before it starts feeling a little stale. The game does, however, encourage you to rush through repeat areas by having time gates that lock after a certain amount of time has passed, and if you're playing like a speedrunner, you'll be rewarded and this helps alleviate some of that repetition I mentioned. Speedrunning is not only encouraged, but it's embedded as its own game mechanic. Almost every level has a door that will unlock after a certain amount of time elapses. All right, and last but not least, we have my absolute favorite, which starts at 3.07 on both videos exactly. Dead Cells figures out an intriguing way to have your roguelite and metroidvania experience all in one by focusing on your failures and urging you to try something new the next time. Dead Cells strikes a perfect and engaging balance between the metroidvania and roguelite experiences by focusing on your failures and urging you to experiment each time you do fail. So I guess that's it. It's kind of flattering, I guess, that IGN is watching uh, Big Boomstick Gaming, but uh, I don't know. What do you do about this kind of thing, guys? Uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.